ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome. Basically, you become a car enthusiast just randomly. Yeah. Because you saw a car, <laughs> then you, cool. find, you find it cool. Yeah. So this whole time I've been confused because you have two oh, F13s. Oh yeah, everyone thinks the same. I know you're about to ask. And I thought, mm. I thought that you you always been switching colors with the car. Oh no, that's what everybody everyone, tells you all the time, everyone right? Everyone thinks that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna. There there are two different cars. There's a right. red one. There's a right. white. So I'm like, all right, cool. I like my car, and I that's my first piston car. So like I have a like I did the turbo kit on there. I did the head gasket. I did the head studs. Like I learned all that and did that. It took me eight months. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never done any of that before. I like the SR20, right? I like the platform. I like the engine. And then that 240 comes with, I think, the KA. Yeah, KA24. KA, right? And so you have the single cam, dual cam, whatever you want. I think it's all it's all your choice of what you're going to use it for, right? Like I think, I, I hate I hate to say it, the SR20 is like engine is all right. It has its limits, but it's okay. But the transmission is glass and there's really no torque in there. Na, 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 na. Boom. I straightened up and I was like, what the, what just happened? Tenemos que darle las gracias al auspiciador de este contenido, por supuesto, de Colombia para el mundo. Knock Limit. Perro Tuning. El tuneador más perro de todo Latinoamérica y Sudamérica. El tuneador más experimentado que ha llegado para comandar en la fiebre Con múltiples galardones destacando en el circuito y dragueo Especialista en programación y recetas para correr más rápido Knock Limit, Knock Limit El programador más perro de carros Contáctalo al número en pantalla En sus redes sociales, síganlo, corrido, háganme el favor Vayan para allá, denle cariño a su... Página de Instagram, eh, Facebook, en todas sus plataformas, síganlo como eh, Knock Limit o Perro Tuning. Lo pueden conseguir así mismo, Perro Tuning o Knock Tuning. Contáctalo de nuevo al número que está en pantalla. Pueden conseguirlo un poquito, si el, el número se va muy rápido, lo pueden, pueden checar en la descripción del video. Ahí pueden conseguir la información completa y un poquito más deta detallada. De Colombia para el mundo. Recuerden, Knock Limit, el tuneador más perro. All right, welcome to a new episode, ladies and gentlemen. This is the second episode um, for English content. You guys been asking me for this for a long time. Um, just I'm just asking to be a little patient because this takes time and to find the right people because I have a big amount of people on my social media um, reaching me out to, you know, get um do podcasts and, and get them interview and all that. But... Most of them are Spanish people. It's hard to find English people uh, and make them sit with me because they probably think like, oh, this guy is probably going to talk to me in Spanish. No, I'm bilingual. I can speak both languages. <laughs> Now, this episode, um, let me give you a um, brief summary of uh, what's, what is going to happen today. So basically, we're going to talk about uh, my guest, um, story we're going to talk about his prior cars we, we're going to talk about an engine in particular <laughs> well more than one probably i don't know who knows uh we're going to talk about drag racing we're going to talk about drift we're going to talk about a lot of things man like i tell you guys this episode is going to be really good um not for nothing <laughs> so i I highly suggest you to hit the like button, leave in the comments. What do you think about this episode? Um, just let me know anything you guys think, what we can prove, what, uh, what we can do better. We, but with not further ado, let's welcome Fresco to the channel. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, man. This has been a long time coming, to be honest. We've been talking about this for like a year, I think. For real. For the year. Yeah. So happy to be here, man. Happy to be here. Absolutely, man. So how are you feeling? Oh, life is good. Life is good. You know, just getting ready for the weekend. We have V2 Labs Mystery Meet. So mm -hmm. like that's all I've been doing for the week. I think there's like 60 drivers. 
don't quote me on that number, but there's a lot. Anyways, either way, so there's a lot of drivers. You had to be selected to do this. I didn't do it last year because I was like unsure of my driving skills, so I didn't sign up. Mm -hmm. I went to the event and I was like, I should have signed up. Like it was one of one of those like woulda, coulda, shoulda things. So this weekend is a day. A lot of drifting. It's like drifting, drag racing, uh, car meet. It's a whole bunch of stuff. So that's like where I'm at now mentally. Like just getting there. <laughs> right, right, right. Let me give you a brief disclosure mm -hmm. of how things work here. Mm -hmm. Bro, don't feel like this is a monologue. <laughs> this is just a conversation. Yeah. I tell you guys also, uh, my audience, this is just a conversation. Mm -hmm. If you see, If you see that he cuts me off or I cut him off, It doesn't matter. It's a conversation. <laughs> like it's like when you guys go to the barber shop and everybody's talking at the same time. That's how it is. Like this is this is why I think that my content is blowing up so so well, you mm -hmm. know, in a in a good way. Because that's how it is. Like yeah. I always trying to keep a conversation mm -hmm. with my guest. I I'm not trying to to be like, "Oh, so Tell me about your life, where you were born. <laughs> like um, a... Tell me who was your inspiration. Mm -hmm. Tell me... Nah, bro. Yeah, like an interrogation. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. That's so played out. Yeah, That's more like a television type of thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why television is getting old and YouTube mm -hmm. is taken to the next level. Yeah. And, and everything streaming related is taken to the next level. Mm -hmm. Bro, um, in my notes, this is funny, because in my <laughs> notes, I had something that I have to mention to you. Uh-uh. Did anyone have ever told you that you look like Idris Elba? Idris Elba. Yeah, I get that. You'd be surprised how often I get that. Mm. It's funny because like certain people are like, yeah, I see it, I see it. And then some people are like, no, not at all. Now here's here's one. Here's one. Michael Jordan's son. The one Yeah, that, that too. That I got I was at the gym one day and some dude was like looking at me and I was like, yo, what's going on? Yeah. And he was like, Are you are you Michael Jordan's son? I'm like, I don't think so. If so, like that's the one that's been know. smashing Scotty Pippen White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, if if I'm him, like, please let me know. He's doing yeah, a lot of things yeah, I want to do. Yeah, imagine, imagine, um, Jordan confuse you with, with, with him. Like, He's probably hey, like, done. Uh, here's the, here's the shot support I've been missing. There you go. Yeah, I, thank you. <laughs> I'll New take car. it. <laughs> New car. But yeah, nah, he's like six four or something like that. I'm only six foot, but. I wish I either one of those people. I'm I'm glad it could be worse, right? I could be yep. some of them yep. be different. Yeah. So. It's funny, um, cause you you know you they always say that we have a twin somewhere, mm -hmm. and I I don't know I, this is probably some conspiracy theory or something <laughs> like that, but I always think that in another dimension, mm -hmm. those people were born and and they're some somehow related to Rich, you, yeah, and I don't know because it, it's so it, it's too much of co of a coincidence that they. It looks just like you, or mm, you, or look you look really just close. like him. Yeah, it's super close. Right, Even right. like sometimes I get random ones, but like those two are ones I look at and I go, I can see it. I right, see right, it. right, 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 right. Bring, twice. bring the oh, microphone closer. Ooh, yep, there you go. Try not to yell. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Um, hey, um, this is this is the first topic that I want to touch base with with you. Mm. Um, let's talk about how Fresco and I met each other. Let's not say uh, the name of the place, mm -hmm. but the f let, let, let's talk about this. All right, it, it's not it's nothing crazy. So <laughs> basically, I was working on this uh, speed shop, and one day you showed up. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you showed up with one of your friends, mm -hmm. and your friend uh, ended up biting the. I think he needed a steering. Did he need a steering wheel? He needed no, he didn't. He he needed seats. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So he ended up biting the trap mm. and bust bust some knockoff seats. Yeah, Steve. I remember that. I remember and that. I can I remember your 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 face, but more than your face, I saw your body your body <laughs> language. You, you I was able to tell that you you was basically trying to scream at your boy and be like, "Don't do, Don't it. do it. What are you doing this?" Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's hard. All right, like, so, and a lot of people know this, like, when it happens, when you're, like, in a pinch to make an event, you start kind of, like, cutting corners a little bit to, to make whatever work. But, like, for me, I'm always, like, I'll just take the time to just get it done mm -hmm. because I, and like everyone says, you'll learn on the back end when you have to do it again, come back and, like, spend twice the money and spend twice, twice the time. So, 
like for me and like I'm not sponsored by these people, don't get me wrong, but I like to run bride seats and only because when I crashed my red car, I was in a bride seat and we hit really hard, but I didn't feel it at all. Like I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And then I got out the car and my whole rear end was like crushed. So when we're like buying seats or harnesses or something, I'm kind of like, well, we should probably buy something of quality instead of just buying like these look cool. Right. You know, if you're just driving around a show car, like have at it. Right. But if you're going to take it on the track or do something crazy, yeah, like that's what, I'm that's what I was trying to tell them, like, we're going to do a track event. If you spin, hit a wall, spin, someone hits you, like it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt twice as much because that seat's going to just fall apart. Right. That's definitely you know? unsafe. So I was trying to get him. I was like, no, 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 no. And he was just like, I want these now. And I was like, yeah. And I definitely feel that because know? I I actually have a steering wheel from them. And in my second event, yeah. I went to a private Hold. one. Um, let, me, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. So in my first event, it was a big one. It was mm. a big um, OSW event. Mm. Like, you know, those um, nights. Oh, like the public day thing? Yeah. 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 Um, in my second one, I went to a private one. Mm -hmm. um, me and a group of people, we rent the, the track. And my steering wheel, I start, I start feeling the steering wheel bending. Mm -hmm. I was able, like, my second, like, when I was doing this, because the layout was like this, mm -hmm. and then this, and then this, and that's when you finish. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was about from here to take the other curve, mm -hmm. the steering wheel make a weird noise. Oh. I had to, I had to, I had to stop. Mm -hmm. I said no. Mm -hmm. Nope. And then it's funny because I, I recently, yeah, as recent as this summer, I did a giveaway. I give away a, a Momo uh, steering wheel. Oh, those are good. And it's funny because um, Momo has a has a technology, if mm. you want to put it that way, yeah. where you where it has a, a some type of QR code mm -hmm. integrated to the to the steering wheel, yeah. where you can scan the steering wheel and confirm if that the steering wheel actually, is actually legit. Oh, that's nice. So, guys, obviously, it's in, it's in Spanish. But in my other YouTube channel, uh, most clips, um, I have a video explaining you guys um, how to confirm if the steering wheel is real or is fake. So you guys are more than welcome. Go to the channel and check out that video. Um, it's going to help you guys out a lot. And it's not only with Momo. Yeah, there's a bunch of companies. Oh, like now. Nardi. Nardi mm -hmm. has that too. Um, which other one? And also, if you see a steering wheel... That is Gretty in HKS, bro. That's a that's a red flag. <laughs> that's a red flag. Right? I like so the way I like, and it sounds crazy because I normally when I buy something that I'm gonna be using a lot, like a seat, a steering wheel, something like that, I try to go to the shop. Like that's why I'm always in the a shop. And like I'll ask them, like, can I like hold it? Can I see it? And then they'll be like, you know, if they're like, oh, no, don't hold it, don't like, then I'm kind of like, that's a little sketchy to me. Like, why can't do I Do you hold? have paperwork? Yeah. Do you have paperwork? Or oh, like, no, oh, they no, only no. give me a bill mm -hmm. when the when the, when the the part or the mm -hmm. seat came here. Da, 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 da. And there's like a ton of videos on YouTube that can like, so for bride seats, let's use bride seats for an example, right? Because that's the last thing I bought. You can go and like look on the internet and they'll tell you exactly how to tell if it's real, fake, mm -hmm. whatever. And then you just follow the guide and. Go in and like, okay, it's steering wheels, you can flex them. Like if you put it on a table and like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a little strong, but like if you like flex it and it flexes, you're going to do the same thing when you're in a seat and you're trying to turn and like, right. you know, the body's moving around. So like if it flexes on a table, imagine what it's going to do in the car when what you're going impact. like 60 miles an hour sideways or whatever, if you're drag racing, you know, right. you know, so whatever happens. Yeah. So. And, and obviously, um. All these, all these seats, they have a, they have a tag on the side mm -hmm. with a serial, serial number. Mm -hmm. Um, bro, I saw a seat, a fake one, mm -hmm. that it had all that, right? Oh, it had everything. It had everything. Oh, check this out. That's check rough. this out. The letters, you know, they're obviously supposed to be on Japanese. Mm -hmm. They were in Chinese. Oh. Um. I said you can, you can, you can trigger somebody else. Like you can catch somebody mm -hmm. else. And, and fool somebody else, not mm, me. Yeah, I'm not the right one. That's the, that's the crazy thing because I think like some companies have like a sister company that isn't the same, but it's the same. If that makes sense, like I know Bride does it. There's another one. I want to call it HKS, but it's not HKS. One of them, they have like a partner company, like a U.S. version and a Japanese version, mm -hmm. or like 
a Ricardo, Taiwanese version. Ricardo, for instance. Yeah, or like a Taiwanese version and a Jap, like what you know, whatever what have you. So just like like I said, just know what you're looking for. Cause like you little things like that, like the lettering is wrong. If you didn't know anybody, you'd be like it's some sort of Asian writing, good enough, you know, and you're off. But yeah, and all, like I said, and and it's it's an automatic um red flag when you see your seat with uh with a, with some kind of weird uh, <laughs> uh, um collaboration. Like mm. if you saw if you see a seat, Yokohama mm -hmm. collaborating with HKS, that doesn't make any sense. Mm. Yeah, some of them are just like off brand. You're like, I don't know. Also, I always look at like if I can find another one of that same one because I think I keep using Bride, but it's like for for a hot minute I was looking for another seat. So in my drift car, I had one bucket seat and then one um, just regular seat. And people would get in the car, and I'd be driving, you know, ma ma ma, and I would like see their head like come over into my view, and I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> and I looked over, and every time I took a turn, their whole body was like. Yeah. <laughs> like on a roller coaster, and I was like, damn, I need to get another seat. Mm. So, of course, I go to Facebook Marketplace and I was looking and I found, I think it was like HKS and Bride or something like that, something mm -hmm. crazy. And I was like, oh, that's a cool seat. And he had it for a good price, nothing super crazy. But then I started thinking, like, is this fake? Is it real? So then I started looking to see if it was like, done. it's a real seat, but he wanted, yep. he wanted a lot for him. And I was like, all right, never mind. And I just found someone who was here in Orlando that had a seat that matched the seat I already had. And uh, he also, he has an RX-7, so we were, like, already friends, so we, like, made a deal, and I got my second seat. But like you were saying, mm -hmm. definitely some collabs don't make sense. It's like, you know, HKS and Nike, that doesn't, no. what would that make, doesn't make any sense right there. So that, That's yeah. like, that's like when you go to the flea market, some type of flea market, mm -hmm. and and you see, like, this, this Louis Vuitton <laughs> collaborating with Gucci and all that, and you're like, it does that make sense? This what is, make what sense. is this? Yeah. So so basically that's how we met. That's mm -hmm. how we met. We we met in um in the in shop. this in this shop. Mm -hmm. Well if you if you want to call it a shop. Um and then I saw your your card, but we're gonna talk about that later. Um mm -hmm. uh, let's let's just let's talk about your your beginnings. Oh uh, how it all started. In the in the car industry. You don't have to you don't have to go in, into details. Yeah. I'll make it quick because it's kinda it's long now. It's I quick. just wanna know. First of all, I just want to know, are you born and raised here in, in the U.S.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, but do you live your entire time here in, in Florida? No, I moved to Florida three, I think from three, three years ago. So where you used to live previously? Oh, here we go. So born in New York, joined the military. I went to California first. Uh, wild story. My friend was like, <laughs> I want to go back to the East Coast and because you get to pick East Coast, West Coast. Right. And he was like, oh, if we go to California, I'd never been to California. I'm 18. So if we go to California, we can smoke weed with Snoop Dogg. We have pool parties, women, da, 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 da. Right? So in my head at 18, I'm like, bet. Women, pools, weed, I want to go. Uh -huh. So then we, we go to California, right? And so I'm in the military. I deployed to Japan for the first time. Um, we went a bunch of places in Japan. I was like, hey, I want to come back here. So then I ended up moving to Japan, still in the military. I moved to Japan. Got my first RX-7. It was blue. It was a 96, I think. A 96 FD blue. But I didn't know how to get cars back to America at the time. I just had it, and I only bought it because I liked it. I didn't know how to drive manual. I didn't know anything about cars. I saw <laughs> it, and I was like, that's cool. I want it. Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't know anything about cars. Right. Got it. Learned how to drive manual in that car. Like, maybe like a five-minute, ten-minute ride. Took me 30 minutes because I was like, start, stall, start, stall, start. Took me forever. So finally had that car. How many times showed up on you? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but not even because the car was bad. It was my driving. Like every time I would stall, it would turn off. And, you know, you had to turn it back on. And then right. you get to a point where you're doing it so much, the battery's dead. Whole bunch of stuff. But I mm -hmm. learned on that car. It was my first car. Then I came back to California. And when I came back, everyone was like, what did you get in Japan? I was like, oh, I had an, an uh, RX-7. And they're like, oh, why didn't you bring it back? You're fucking eight. I didn't know how cool or like, you know, valuable the car was. It was mm -hmm. just cool to me. So then I was like, okay, if I go back to Japan, I'm always going to have an FD. I'm going to buy one, learn the rules, bring it back with me. And so then I ended up going back to Japan. So this time I went to, first time was Hiroshima. Second time was Okinawa. So like if there's anyone watching that's like in the military, they know Okinawa. It's like an right, island. Right, right. It's like Hawaii to California. That's like mainland to mm -hmm. Okinawa. A lot of military people, a lot of cars. Back then, GTR 32s, because they were legal. 33s weren't legal yet. We're talking about how long ago? <sighs> what year? Around. 2012? 
2012, 2012 to 2015, because okay. that's when I was in Okinawa, yeah. So, like, our XMs were maybe, like, 8,000, 10,000 on the high end. Sheesh. Right? It's cr- like, 8,000 on the high end. I our 32s were, like, 10,000, 12,000 10, like 10, 12, on the high end. Uh, Mark IV Supers were 10,000, 12,000 on the high end. But if you caught a military person that was leaving, you could get one for, like, six, 7,000. No problem. All day. Um, 34s were a little expensive. But they were, like, 15,000. But they weren't legal yet, but they were still 15,000. Bro, 15,000, bro. Mm. 33s were dirt cheap because no bro. one, no one, they wanted a 32 or a 34. No one wanted a 33. So those listen, are cheap. Listen, whoever, whoever caught that car at that price mm. at that time and still have it right now. Oh, they're worth, they're worth so much, so much. That's like people, when people, on. Uh, uh, Caught um bitcoins at the moment. Yeah, right before they like shot out. I like so I had an opportunity to buy all those cars, right? And so when I'm looking at buying these cars, I already said I'm gonna get FD, right? Got the FD, was happy. I went to mainland to buy it to from a rotary shop and um they were like a race rotary shop. And I was trying to make a deal, like, hey, can I give you X amount of dollars? They were like, You either buy the car or you leave. We don't care. Dude like said it to my face and then walked off into the garage. It's like Japanese dude, straight face, cigarette in the mouth. Said easy, buy the car at this price or go home. Walked back in the garage, started working on that race, that race car. So then I bought the car, brought it back down to Okinawa. And I've had it since 2000, so like yeah, 2012, 2013. I've had that car ever since. So the white RX-7 I ride around, and that's the same one I've had forever now. Wow. Um. So then, boom, I have that car. I bring it back to California. The military has a rule where if they only ship one car. So they'll ship your car or they'll store your car. You got to pick one. So oh, so I, they, they did it for you? Yeah, yeah, I didn't pay anything. That's nice. the If you have a friend in the military, I'm telling you now, and they're in Japan, nice. have them buy a car and the military will ship it for them. As long as they don't have a car in storage by the military. Nice. You got to pick, they store your car or they ship your car. Well, obviously you got to slice some money on the side. But if you... All right. It's not the same. It, yeah, it's it, but it's cheaper than paying shipping because like if... Shipping is what, like $3,000, $5,000? Depending who it is. I had, when I shipped my last car, it was like $2,000, $2,000. I think I paid $2,000. Um... But I would not. I would not advise doing it yourself. Just have a company do yeah. it. But if you can have a military member, just buy the car you want. Give them the money. Maybe pay them five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars, and then they just have the military. They just do all the paperwork and have the military ship it. It's free. But and of course, somebody that you can trust, someone you can trust. If they just take your money, take your car, then not like yeah, n- no random people. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I can help you out. Yeah. And then you they come back and they're like, Yo, where's my car? And they're like, What car? Right. So then you screw. But who are back, you? Yeah. Like who are you? I don't know you. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, so that was the RX-7. Came back to California, and then I went back to Japan. Um, then I went to Fuji. I went to Tokyo the last time I went to Tokyo, nice. um, which is my favorite place. Like I like I like Japan in general. Tokyo is really fun because it's such okay. a big city and there's so much going on. Car culture is cool. Food is cool. People are cool. You know, how, tr- how true is that um, Tokyo looks like just like, like at least the downtown. It looks just like New York. It's like Manhattan. New York, but like oh, yeah. so that's like when you're in Japan, Tokyo feels like New York. The people almost feel the same too because mm-hmm. everyone is so in their own world that they don't talk to you right now. Osaka, which is like four or five hours south, feels like LA, where everyone's nice, everyone's cool, everyone's chill, everyone's really talkative. Car culture there is still crazy. But like that's the difference. Osaka's fun, Tokyo's fun. Tokyo's bigger, but Osaka, I would say I'd rather spend time there. But so I bought I bought the red S13 in uh in Tokyo. Actually, I bought it in Osaka. I drove down to Osaka, bought that car, shipped that back here from the military, shipped it back. Boom. So then I had the white FD, the uh red S13. Then I moved from California, got out the military, moved to Florida. So I have both cars here. Right? So hold on, let me ask you this before yeah. you before you keep telling me your the the story. Yeah. Um. So the military only allows you to bring one car at a time, right? But mm-hmm. is it is it for for like a year, for months, or how it works? Oh, how long do I have to be there before yeah. I can ship it? I think the rule is eighteen months. I think you have to be there eighteen months before you can ship a car. So you have to be there a little like more a than a half. year, and yeah. then. Yeah, so but- so basically, every you have once a year. You're allowed to bring a car once a year. Uh, in a in a sense, because you have to be moving with the car. They don't just ship it. So, my bad. So what has to happen is like, say you get um, you're going from you're based in California. Now you're being based in Japan. They'll move your car from California to Japan. You could take a Hellcat from here to Japan. You just have to meet all the regulations. 
right? And so you got to figure that out, whatever that is. And they're really strict in Japan. Right. So then when I, you're living in Japan, you buy a car there. Uh, the government's not stor storaging a car for you. So then they're like, okay, it's time for you to go from Japan based to Hawaii or California, right? As long as you can't physically drive your car to your next station, the government's required to move it. So like if you're going from California to say Florida, they don't move it. You can drive it. So you have to drive it. Or you can pay a company to ship it, but like it's on your own. But way the to car, do it. the car cannot stay in a in a in a specific um um country or or city. Like let's say you bring the car from Japan to here, mm -hmm. and they deploy you again to go back to Japan. Mm -hmm. And let's say you want to just leave the car here. Oh, you can. So you like, can. and so that's what I'm saying. They can they can store that car for you. But now, if they're paying to store it, they're not going to pay to ship another one. So what about if you want to? Um, become that from 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 just being like hard that you want to move from one place to the other, bring it here or whatever to a personal use. Oh, yeah. So like the the the, the like they allow you to do that? Kind of, sort of. So what like what I did was since they're only going to store one car or they're going to ship a car, and I bought the red S13 in Japan, but the RX7 was still in California. Just have your friend hold your car. Hmm. Now they're not storing a car for you, so now they are required to ship a car for you. And then you can get you can just keep doing that. So have a friend that has a nice garage or pay for your own storage. It's mm -hmm. not that much money. No, it's not. And then you store your car. Or like just don't have the military store your car. Store your own car or leave it with a friend. And when you go over there, have the military just ship it for you. So like that's that's the loophole. That's a cheat right there. You can go anywhere. I have a friend that he was in Japan, bought an S15, took the S15, made the military, bring it with him to Spain, went from Spain, came back to Japan, they brought his car with him. And then now he's going back from Japan to Spain. And they move it. He doesn't pay anything. They just move his car every time. That's crazy. So it's like you, that $2,000 he would have ate every time. He doesn't pay it. They do it. He just drops so, it off. Just... So basically, um, the military, like, so basically, just just so I can see, so I can see if I got this right, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just like a little, like a brief summary of everything you said. Mm -hmm. So basically, you got your first, car um uh, and you become a car enthusiast just randomly yeah because you saw a car <laughs> that you cool. find you find it cool yeah and and then the military helped helped you to get your first car which is the which it was the still the fd, FD yeah. and then from from the fd you open more doors and you're you found the s13 mm -hmm. you end up liking the s13 mm -hmm. and you got the s13 but we're gonna talk about that. Mm -hmm. Actually, now I want I want to touch bases with you, and I, I'm so this whole time I've been confused because you have two oh, S13s. Oh yeah, everyone thinks the same. I know you're about to ask. Go and ahead. I thought mm -hmm. I thought that you you always been switching colors with the car. Oh no, that's what everybody everyone, tells you all the time, right? Everyone thinks that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna there there are two different cars. There's a right. red one. There's a white. So I have I have three cars, right? The FD. The red S13 and then the white S13. The white right? one. And then I had a BMW, sold the BMW, right? So both of them are white body kits. Yeah, both of them Rocket Bunny, they're they're yeah. identical, almost identical. There's like little differences, but they're pretty much identical. And then this is how it happened. So I had the red one and I would take the red one all over the place, and everyone would always say, oh, I want to buy that. If you sell it, I'll buy it. If you sell it, I'll buy it. You know how that goes. It's, ba it's bad. Ass. Everyone says that, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I like my car. And I that's my first piston car. So like I have a like, I did the turbo kit on there. I did the head gasket. I did the head studs. Like, I learned all that and did that. It took me eight months. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never done any of that before. Jason, don't get on my back. Um, but, like, I didn't know anything about that. So it took me so long to learn and, like, piece it together and learn everything about this. So that was, like, my baby. Still is. That's why I can't let it go. So I saw the white one come up, and I was like, well, if I buy that, if everyone wants my car, this is exactly the same car, and I can just get it here and sell it. And um, so I got it here. And then when I started saying like, hey, I got this car and I would tell the people the price, they were like, oh, I don't want it anymore. I don't want it. So then no one wanted it. So then it's like, unfortunately, but fortunately for me, I got stuck with the car. And I have a saying, if I open an engine, it is now my car, I won't sell it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately I had to open the engine on the white one and now it's my car, I'm not selling it. I'm just gonna, it's, it'll just blow up. Just, just, <laughs> just rev it just until it, yeah. it catch on fire. Mm -hmm. It's already done that once, so. I, I <laughs> no gotta, I gotta give it to you because at least with these two cars, because not a people, not a lot of people have this knowledge, and not a lot of people knows about 
how rare these cars are. Mm -hmm. They just they think that oh it's just uh it's just an S13. <laughs> oh it's it's a it's a Sylvia S13. Mm -hmm. And they run on that part because mm -hmm. it's not even a Sylvia. It's on a 180 SX. Yeah. Which which is makes it even more rare. Yeah, I you don't think... you don't see too many 180 SX. That's 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 mm. the first thing. The second thing is when you compare that car to the 240 SX, mm -hmm. you're tripping. <laughs> you're tripping because the main fact the car is right hand drive. That's mm. the first thing. That's that's from from what my knowledge allows me to speak up. Mm. The car is right hand drive. The car comes with his S. SR20 mm. DET turbo mm -hmm. yeah. factory. And it's completely different. You look at the car and you compare that car to a regular 240SX, mm -hmm. it's different. Uh, even from factory, they look different. Yeah. I think it's really like, for me, it's it's whoever you ask, right? So like, I like the SR20, right? I like the platform. I like the engine. And then that 240 comes with, I think, the KA. Yeah, KA24. KA, right? And so you have the single cam, dual cam, whatever you want. I think it's all it's all your choice of what you're gonna use it for, right? Like I think I, I hate I hate to say it, the SR20 is like engine is all right. It has its limits, but it's okay. Um, but the transmission is glass, and there's really no torque in there. Um, but then the KA, since it is a truck motor, it does produce more torque. But you still got to watch out because it's not it's never it wasn't made to be boosted. So you do run into like that problem of like you can just shred pistons. So. You know, like the SR20, you could push it because those pistons were made to be boosted, right? Um, like in my red one, I think I was pushing 380. I think I've done like 18 pounds of boost before. No problem. I don't know enough about the KA. If I turboed it, would those pistons hold? Would those rods hold? Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. But that's something I don't want to find out the hard way. But I have a friend who's building his KA and he's going to throw a turbo in it. So we're going to see how far he can push it, right. how much he can do. Because his his whole thing is he wants to push it close to my car. So when we drive together, we're really in a similar boat. But mm -hmm. then we're really going to see at that time, like, what are the major differences? The biggest thing I'm seeing from, like, what we've looked at, the KA has more torque, mm -hmm. right? But he has to build his whole bottom end for it to, like, not explode yeah, but you, itself. But I this is my opinion. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest downfall about the KA24 mm -hmm. K A twenty four, not K twenty four. That's a Honda guys. That's a whole different, um, whole different, whole different beast, a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the downfall about that engine is, bro, is the aftermarket support. Oh, that is that is a big one. Like I think we get lucky here because we have Injuku. Mm -hmm. I'll say this to anyone, and like, there's not too there's not too many too too many options out mm -hmm. there for pistons, for rods, for for uh for cams, mm -hmm. like. Bro, like you got to deal with whatever is available and everything else is going to be machine shop mm. or if you want to CNC things around. Mm. But again, that engine is so cheap and you can find it in so, in so many um, platforms that, that you tell yourself, you want to do that? <laughs> it's not easier just to toss a... A Chinese turbo kit mm. and beat the crap of it until the engine decides to, to, to give go. up. Mm -hmm. Um, so you know, it's one of those things. In the other hand, the SR20, you know for a fact, mm. that you gotta be support. careful with that engine. Yeah, that's like you'll hear me, like people will hear me all the time. They're like, Hey man, can I drive your car? That's a question I get all the time. And I let my 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 good friend Ryan drive it because he is there. Pretty much 99% of the time, he helps me fix the car all the time. So it's only right that he drives it because he literally, he fixes half of the stuff that I, I break. He'll be like, okay, I'm going to come over and help you, right? So, but when whenever I tell people like, Ryan, he's about to drive him, like, number one, no clutch kicks. Number two, off red line. Number three, don't put it in a wall. Those are like my three things I always say. Anyone's like, I'll drive it. Like, because some people will come from like the, the Z platform or they'll come from the G platform or, you know, even something with an LS and you can really like, or even if you have a Jay Z, you can really like clutch kick, you can clutch dump, you can really just like get into it. And I'm even, like, even even my ding dong engine, I can. Yeah, clutch you can kick. really get into it. Like mine, I'm like, it's cool. Like it's, I think it has the cool factor, but like, I don't think so, pal. Yeah, like it just doesn't have the. It doesn't have the like, like if it were up to me, I would have a Jay Z or I would have an RB, something that can handle like the abuse, but like the S chassis platform, it's cool. 
but it does have a ceiling. And once you like, I'm like riding that line on the ceiling. So like, this is transmission number two. So I'm really not trying to go transmission number three. You know, I'm trying to just learn my lessons here, but I don't know. KA, SR, I like them both. I like both cars, depending on what you want to do, but let's talk, Mark Sports cool. Let's talk about the SR20. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, let's um dedicate some time to that engine. And, mm -hmm. and I want to know your thoughts about that engine. Mm -hmm. Um, But let me bring this um this scenario first. Mm -hmm. Not a scenario. It's more like a like a thought. Mm -hmm. My thought. I've seen that a lot of people, um, SR20 um owners, mm -hmm. they their main complaint about these engines is the fuel system. Mm. They always have issues with mm -hmm. fuel with fuel system. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know if from your experience mm -hmm. that was part of your problems and also if there's any other more problems with the SR20 engines, mm -hmm. which ones are they? Oh, yeah. So like the main things that I like I've experienced, fuel was one and before I had a problem because like people want to tune it and push more power, but to get more power, you need more fuel, more air, you know, whole shebang. So before I even had that problem, all I did was switch my fuel pump and then get a new fuel hanger and then run new lines. And bigger injectors, right? That sounds like a lot, but it really is like it's a basic. weekend. It's, it's a basic, basic weekend basic. job that you have to do anyways. So did that, right? That fixed my fueling perfectly fine. And then the next thing I would say is if you're trying to push power, head studs. Head studs, head studs, head studs. Um, Mozworks makes some good ones. ARP makes some good ones. And that just keeps your block from separating from your head. Because that's like, before I even started my whole little turbo build, right? Because it's my first piston car. I went from rotary to this. Rotary's a whole different story. And like the first thing everyone told, especially in Japan, they were all like head studs, head studs, head studs, head gasket. Like that's what they were saying. Those those two things you got to mm -hmm. do. So those are the two things I would say. Like fueling does become an issue, but just get it over and done with. Then head studs, head gasket, and then after that, it's the engine is pretty much fine. Just you can't. Can you make 500 horsepower? Yes, you can. But then there's other things that can't handle. Like I think if I had to pick the like Achilles heel of that platform. It's a transmission. Mm -hmm. Transmission can't handle my transmission blew, and I wasn't doing anything like crazy. I was coming, you know, uh, you know, the second to last turn on the Black Friday layout, that mm -hmm. second turn. I was there by the wall, full throttle, second gear, na 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 na, boom. I straightened up, and I was like, "What the? What just happened?" I think I saw something you post, probably because like, no, I think you post something. It was a it was a control arm problem. Oh. Probably, like know. that car, it's only I've only had like two problems with it. One was I got hit <laughs> two with the transmission, and that's been it really. But the, um, do you fix that hit? Yeah, yeah, it's already cars back together. Everything's good. Um, and like that was kind of my fault. So I don't, I don't even understand. And, and sorry for cutting you off. Yeah, no, you're good. I don't understand <laughs> why, why in your mind, what do you have in your mind when you decide to? Do uh, the 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 lead and chase mm -hmm. with that car. Oh, well, all right. So like, with that kind of car, I don't oh, do I that. Everyone, everyone says don't do it. I wouldn't. Like, I I I'll stay I on classy oh. and just keep enjoying it by myself. I think everyone like if you if you drift, you 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 like get it. It's like when you're by yourself, it's fun, right? You get really good, but you get to a point where you're like, this is boring. Like you're just driving by. Like you're gonna get to a point where you get it so much, you're yeah. like, I can do this without I thinking. Get it. And then you're like, well, now what's the next, what's the next step up? The next step up is driving with other drivers. And one thing I always say to everyone, and like, I think Adam LZ has said it, other people, whenever you get your car on track and you decide to drive with someone else, you are accepting that your car can get crushed. And yeah. like, you just got to accept that that's going to happen. And that's something that after that hit, and of course that was my fault. I spun. If I didn't spin, he doesn't hit me. You know, life goes on. But now when I drive and I get in front of someone, I know. I can get hit and I have mm -hmm. to accept it. It is what it is. Like, this is life. They're going to hit it. It's going to happen. I would prefer you guys not to hit me, please. And thank you. But like, if I do get hit, you know, I, 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 I can say, I don't want to drive with anyone, but if I say, Hey, let's go, I can get hit. Like, mm -hmm. Right. And one thing that drives me to do that is a lot of people are like, Oh, you have a nice car. It's keeping you from being good. And like, it's not really the case. I don't mind driving with people. I just don't feel like fixing stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I'm not afraid of it getting broken. Like if it breaks, it breaks. That's part of it's life. It's not cheap. I, and oh, I'm not saying I make a lot of money, but like, I don't, I think I can, I have enough connections that I can like reach out to people and they can help. I just don't like taking the time to 
fix it because that's time I'm not driving. But still not cheap not. because that money that money could have could have gone somewhere, somewhere else. else. But for me now, it's just a time thing. It's I have an RX7 that needs things done. I have the red S13 that I haven't put together yet that's gotten out of control. Then I have the white S13 that's still running and driving. So if I can keep that running and driving and get these two to go, you know, and I can still make events, that's what I want to do. So when people are like, oh, you're not driving to your full potential. Like, I am. I'm driving. But, like, with the idea of, like, I would like – if I drove a – If I drove the E46 that I used to have, I drove the same way because like I want this to drive so I can make next month. I can make fall double down in Atlanta. I can make, you know, maybe the T-Paints um, Drift Symphony. I want to make these events so I need the car to work to make these events, you know. So I don't mind. Like you see some really nice cars out there. I think Andrew Grendel drifted a Ferrari. Like I, in the grand scheme yeah. of things, my car is not. I, I've seen everything. Yeah, I, I'm I, not that that big of a deal. <laughs> I saw I saw this guy. Now that you mentioned that, I um I saw this guy um, Mad Mike. His name is yeah, Mad Mike. Yeah, bro, drifting a fucking it's a McLaren. I think it's a McLaren, a McLaren rotary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He made a he made a rotary. Yeah. I saw I saw this. It was a it was a Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Odyssey was two J Odyssey, <laughs> or no, it was an Odyssey Honda Odyssey, right? Mm -hmm. I always get confused with the Odyssey and the and the um, Sienna, Sienna, whatever you oh, call it, Toyota. Anyway, I saw a 2J Honda Odyssey mm -hmm. drifting. Mm -hmm. I've seen everything, bro. Yeah, I've seen everything, and I'm like, I'm not surprised anymore. And we we were having that conversation mm -hmm. um, behind um, camera mm -hmm. where we talk about that. Cars, in other in other words, cars they don't they don't surprise us anymore because we have seen everything. Seen so much stuff. Like, I think the only thing that surprised me recently, I saw someone in an S15 at OSW. That I was behind them. I wasn't paying attention. But drifting or yeah, just drifting? Ah, see what? Yep. Yeah, see what I mean? And so that kind of like because I we got in line right, we pull up, and then normally when I pull up, I always stay in the left lane. It's just easier for me to see. And then uh, I pull up. And I normally look over and the person's right next to me, right? Like it's we're like this, mm -hmm. like right next to each other. And I look over and they're on the far side. And I'm like, the fuck are they driving? Because they're so close, I can't see the car. And then obviously their line goes and they go up. And I'm like, all right, I know I do a lot of dumb stuff. Like I am drifting a nice car. Like I get it. It's expensive, whatever. But an S15 is like me drifting the FD. Not saying I won't drift the FD, but I'm just saying. You do what? You do dumb stuff? I would be really caught. Like that. that's like, you know. But Where you got somebody dumb mirror. <laughs> <laughs> What's that dumb? They're just brave. Like I get it. You know, I've seen GTRs out there, so it's like, nah, hell no. In the grand no. scheme of things, it might seem wild, but then there's another level to like a nah. whole bunch of other stuff. So and and not to mention that, not for nothing, OSW, you know, give it to y'all. Um, mm -hmm. great place. Um, mm -hmm. everything great, but I don't think, um, OSW is the perfect track for those cars. No, I think it it all depends on like. You're driving. So I like OSW because it's a good place to learn. I know some people are against learning on a skid pad, but I think a skid pad gives you a chance to make mistakes right. and kind of fine tune your line. I would start at a skid pad and then go to like a road course. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would start at a road course and then come to a skid pad. When I went to Sebring, I had already started at OSW and I went to Sebring. Sebring was definitely more challenging for me than OSW, but I'm glad I started at OSW. And then went there because they have part that is on track and then it goes into like a pad. The on track portion to me was so hard because now you have boundaries. Like if you miss this turn, you just go into the grass or you miss that turn, you go into a wall. It's like different OSW. You miss it. You hit a cone. It sucks. But yeah, like, it's just a cone. It's just a cone. You'll be all right. Right. So I think a skid pad is good for if you're learning. But then when you're like progressing, I think a road course is like harder i think like even uh, i think leadfoot city is starting to make like a course we don't know if it's a skid pad or a track even when i think about doing like a road course i'm like oh all these panels are coming off i'm taking mm -hmm. all my panels off because i know first turn i'm going into the grass i could i can feel it i'm like up oh, grass so like all panels come off you know but to each their own like i don't i don't bash either way i prefer a road course just because it's challenging Like, I think I've seen the firm, too. Like, I've watched people drive on the firm. That looks wild and challenging. But if I just want to hang out with my friends and, like, have a good time, skid pad is where I want to be. Because yeah, it's, yeah. it's so much room and just... For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Hey, what are your thoughts about the the Sims? Sims? All right. So, <laughs> at first, I was super against Sims. I was like, don't get a Sim. You just real drive, and it'll be better. 
And then I crashed, right? And so then, <laughs> then my mind changed because I was like, I've been seeing people who like never drove before and they played sim yeah. and they get in the car and yeah. they can link OSW in like first day. That took me like three events to get, maybe even longer. So then I bought it after I crashed. I uh, I added angle kit to the car because I didn't have that before. I had a front bash bar. If you've seen the video, I didn't have one of those. My car crushed mm -hmm. like a taco. So I got a bash bar. And then another thing is I got a sim so I could practice that situation. And so the, 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 um, the guy that hit me, like everyone's like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that. But like you can't simulate crashing. You can't practice crashing. Mm -hmm. There's no like a sim, but a sim gives you that chance to practice that. I was on the sim with a K1. You can practice to avoid it. Mm -hmm. You can practice avoid it. You can practice being in that situation. You could have practiced with like what you do. I was with K1 and all these guys in the sim. And I told him, I'm just practicing like accident avoidance. So if you guys spin, that's fine. I'm going to try to like dodge left, dodge right. Maybe just drive off track. Just practice being behind people. Because when you're in, like you're in tandem with someone, you're behind them. There's so many things going on in your head. You're like, you're looking at the course. You're looking at their car. Like you're looking wherever you look. Some people look front wheel. Some people look like side panel and you're still driving like, right. So all these things you might be learning on the fly, but if you have a SIM and you've done this a hundred times, your footwork, your handwork is not something you're worried about. You're only focusing on like that lead driver. So yep. I think a SIM is like probably one of the best things. And the, one of the better things is that it's free tires. Like they're not real tires. Like you're not, not you're not, not paying tires, you're not paying gas. I hit another car on track on sim, reset button, start over. That's no it. harm, no foul, right? So I would say, no, no Sims rocket bunny panels to no be panels to get fine. Those are not cheap. <laughs> kind of those are not cheap, and it gets shipped. Mm. That sucks. Um, plus, now we have Sim HQ right here with Adam LZ. So anything you want, you can get it in a day. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I I would say sim. I have a sim. I'm on it every day, and like I drive. What, what, what kind of setup you got? Uh, it's kind of crazy. I got two. Okay. I, I like, I should get paid let, for like, let me guess, let me guess. Uh, trust master and uh, no, steering no, wheel and no, what, what do you got? What do you got? So I always go Facebook marketplace, right? That's like my first stop for everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, they should pay me cause I buy everything on there. So uh, like have the parts for the, or at uh, least things for free. <laughs> yeah. At least fucking give discount. But, um, so I found a guy and he's like real big into sim racing. And he had like a three panel, like F1, mm. like the seat sat back and like he had a bunch of stuff. And he was like, hey, I'm getting rid of my old setup. And I was like, what does your old setup look like? This dude had a chair, um, steering wheel, um, the base. It's not Thrustmaster. It's the other one. I forgot. I got to look at it again. But anyways, it's like a really good um, base. He had the pedals and he had the 3D screen, uh, the th like the big panel screen, like the Odyssey screen. And so that's what I ended up buying. So I have like the full setup with the shifter, the e-brake, um, and it's left hand, it's right hand drive setup for me to be like I'm in the car, um, full seat. Like it's it's not one of the ones that you're at your desk like messing around with. Like mm -hmm. you know nothing wrong with that one either. But I wanted to make it as real as possible, and he gave me such a good deal. He was like, I just need to get rid of it because I like his new setup was even crazier. It was like it was like a lawn chair laid back, and the screen sat up like this, and then like everything is like pointed up. And it was crazy. And he was like, I need room for this one. What's the whole point of having it like that? I have no clue. I like, like freezing up. I never asked him because like he had two sims set up. He had like one here, one here. And then the third one was like in his bedroom. Just, just, I was getting rid of it. And I was just like, so you can be more comfortable. Or I, it is? I was like, I was going to ask, but I was like, I really just want to get this and get, get out. out. <laughs> I got to go set this up in the house. So yeah. So that's mine. It's like a full setup, like a whole thing. So it, it actually like a set of Corsa feels like my car. There's mm -hmm. stuff I can do in that game that I would never do in my car, but like it feels real. Like it feels exactly like it, it takes me, it used to take me like three warm up laps to get used to my car again. Now it takes me one lap and I'm like ready to go. What kind of gaming um, sim you, you use? Um, oh, like what, like what platform? Yeah. Like, yeah, the, the platform. Yeah. Uh, a set of Corsa. Cause okay. they have the, they have the whole drifting, drifting mod in there. So it's like, you can just download the cars you want. I found a car that's like, feels like my car. I went through a couple of cars. I said, this doesn't feel like this, this doesn't feel like it. And then I found one like this feels exactly. Like so they give you like different setups that you can uh, adjust and, and mm -hmm. make, yeah. it, make it feel like it's actually like your car. Yeah. So they have like car packs. So you can like, like, so one might be like BDC cars. It's like people make a car pack and you can just download them and you can use those cars in the game. And certain cars feel like the one that I have, I think it's uh, called Gravy Garage. It's a white S13 with a 2J in it. That feels close to what my car feels like. And so that's the one I use like 
all the time. I've driven other ones. There's like a BDC, I think. It's more of a, it feels more like a stock S13, but still feels close to my car. Just not with the same amount of power, but feels really close. And then they have a bunch of other cars. Like I, I, there's a RX-7 in there with like 2,000 horsepower. Feels nothing like my RX-7 because obviously it's a little different, but I don't know. I think it's fun. There's a gap difference. Yeah, just, just a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> hey, uh, now now that you you mentioned your your RX-7, let's mm -hmm. talk about the rotaries. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your experience with them and what do you think about them? What are the the biggest headaches mm. that you got with that you had with with that car or that engine <laughs> in particular? Yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, what do you think about like let's if you can advise people or mm. you can tell people uh, what's better or or good about the um the engine or the platform mm -hmm. and if the platform is as bad as people, people say. say mm. Uh. I, sp I spoke with experts, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, they had their point of view mm -hmm. um, for drag racing. Yeah. And also, we did we, we went over everything in Spanish, but I want to go over in, in English. Yeah. You know. Yeah. From my, different. like, from my experience, right? And so, like I said, I've had my RX-7 for, since 2012, 2013 until now. So, that's like 11 years or something crazy. I've driven that car. When I moved from California, I drove it from California to Orlando. So San Diego to Orlando, no problems, right? So when people say they're not reliable, it's not that they're not reliable. It's just that it does take more maintenance than a normal car. Like if you have an LS, maybe you cannot change the oil or you can like go a little past the recommended time. With an RX-7 or a rotary, don't do that. It's like things will start to break. Um, but the things I like, they sound amazing. They sound amazing. They sound like no other car. They sound amazing. Um, you don't have any torque. That's one thing you don't have torque, but the car is so light. I used to, uh, the reason I bought that car after I brought it back to America, I used to track race it like in California and I could catch, uh, NSXs. I can catch Porsches. I can catch BMWs because the car is so nimble, so light engine, so light. So once you get the car moving, the momentum of it, you can just, all right. So that's why I like the rotary engine because it's light and it does for its size, puts out good power. The things I would recommend if you're going to buy one, one, Buy it from a good place that actually works on rotaries. Um, the advice that was given to me, I don't know how true it is, but it's always been right to me. If you have someone working on it, make sure they're Puerto Rican. That's what I've been told, hands down. And every person that I've gone to for advice about the car, they've been Puerto Rican and they've been spot on every time. From California all the way to Florida, they've been Puerto Rican and they've been right. Yeah, because so. we are we are the only the only dumb people who <laughs> who likes to go against the against the grain. Yeah, and but, we like we like to put our our full effort mm -hmm. in. But every time they've been they've been in right. headaches. They've been right. They every time I go to them, they've been right. I've had a problem. They've yeah. been right. Um. So with that car, the only problem that I had, and I fixed it right away, was just heat management. It puts out so much heat. So you got to get a bigger intercooler. You got to get a dual pass radiator. And then it has the, um, mine is the R, my RX-7 is the R1 version. So it had dual oil coolers. So you just upgrade those. And that's all I've done. Bigger intercooler, bigger radiator, bigger um, oil coolers. And I've never had any problems. Like it's the, like I said, from California to here. The the intercooler, you 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 kept the, what what do they call it? The, the V-mount? The no, v I never, I never V-mounted because um, V-mounting takes like $2,000. That's $2,000 I don't have back then. I was in the military too. So like people think military people are rich. No. Like it's like your bills, your money is like that. So I didn't have it. So I uh, front mounted mine. So okay. that, yep. it, that does make it a little hotter, but as long as I'm moving forward, it works pretty well, but I don't ever like beat on it. Or like when I was track racing it, you're going in like, you know, and the mm -hmm. air's coming through, but I've never like put it sideways because then the air wouldn't come through and it would overheat. Right. Right. Pop. So, but I've driven it through, I've driven that from San Diego to Vegas through death Valley. Yours, okay. yours is the, is the the twin turbo, or yeah. you converted it twin turbo? It's always okay. been twin. Um, is so it single now or still twin? It's turbo? it's in the process. So if I didn't crash the red one, it would be single turbo by now. But like mm -hmm. things happen, and then it forces like other things to happen. You know what I mean? So it it's just like you if you buy, and that's the thing about everyone's like, oh, you have multiple cars. That's so cool. It's like money consuming and time consuming. So it's like once. Say you have the RX-7, right, and it's doing great, and then it needs tires, right? So then that car is down. 
But then you're driving the white S13 and like, this is good. Oh, snap. It pops a head gasket. Okay, now I'm going to drive the red one. Oh, the red one's good. Oh, you put it into a wall. Now I have three problems and I've fixed nothing. You're sugar, you sugar yeah. coating everything, bro. Let, <laughs> let's keep it, let's keep it a thousand. It's not, co it's not cost effective, bro. Yeah, no, it's not. I would, you, I you, would not you lose it. more mm -hmm. than what you make. Mm -hmm. But like, once if you, you make anything, yeah, if, if you make, you won't make anything, you won't make anything. Like car stuff, like there are people who are able to make this a, like a thing and make money out of it, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But I think you just have to accept that you're going to lose money. And yeah, just, of course. You're going to have fun doing it. But you're gonna, you could be worse. You could be doing cocaine. So, like, really, if you're gonna pick some stuff, <laughs> um, but like, you just gotta accept that you're going to lose money and just accept it. And it's part of it, you know. But I think whenever I think about this, RX7 is the one I always wanna sell and I don't wanna sell at the same time. I'll take it out the garage and I'll take it like down the street or to the gym. And I'm like, I'm never gonna sell this fucking car. But like, I walk in the garage and look and go, damn, that's like $35,000. I could just have now and yep. finish other stuff. But then I get in it and I'm like, yeah. No. Yeah, but again, it's one of those things that that car, it might it might worth that right now. Mm -hmm. And it might. But eventually, because mm -hmm. I don't see I don't see that car going down in price. Mm -hmm. Especially unless unless you have a really good connection yeah. over there and do um what you just talk about, what we just yeah, talked like about. Yeah, like back and forth. Right. And um but yeah, you, I got to give it to you on that part about, and it's not because I'm Puerto Rican, <laughs> but Puerto Ricans, we are the most badasses mm -hmm. working on rotaries because mm -hmm. we spend so much time and, and searching and developing mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of the parts that we don't, that manufacturers, they don't necessarily make, mm -hmm. we make them. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like rotaries are are a different breed. Yeah, I I have my eyes on. Well, obviously, we we look up at the FD, mm -hmm. and we always wanted to have an FD. I think yeah. all the cars enthusiasts love or hate it. At some mm -hmm. like the at least the rotaries. Yeah, we we all we all have something in common. Is that we love the FD. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you love or hate yeah. the rotary engine the in particular. Yeah, the FD is what the everyone FD loves. The FD is FD, bro. Um, you want to hear something crazy? Yeah, what's up? I some and it's gonna sound like the dumbest thing, but like you ever have something that you see often and you kind of it loses its like appeal to you, or you see it so much you're just like it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. So my sons and even me sometimes they look at my car and they go, mm -hmm. this I I kid you not. K1, they saw his Corvette and they were like, oh my God, a Corvette. Ah. I'm like, bro, what about my RX-7? They're like, <laughs> daddy's S13? Until, until they see people. Yeah, the people, like that was one thing they never understood. So like the RX-7, sometimes I forget it's an RX-7. I, I've had it for so long. It's like, it's cool. But then um, I go to a car meet and they're in the car and they're like, daddy, why is everyone looking at us? Why is everyone come so close? Like, oh, they think this car is really cool. And they're like, huh? So sometimes, like today, I'll pick them up in the S13, and they'll like flex on their friends with the car. With the S13. Yeah. So they're like, you know, they got to get in the car, and they're sitting on like, you know, left hand side, and we're driving down the street, and they'll see their friend on the side of the road, and they're like, "Hey, Billy, this is my dad's car," and like that's the craziest <laughs> thing because like at home they're like, whatever, but whatever. when they see their friends, they like flex real quick, or like a kid will be walking, they're like, "That's my dad's car," and yeah. the kid will be like, "Is it fast?" And like. Yeah, it's faster than your dad's car, right? I'm just waiting for some dad to have like a Lamborghini or like a built like right. Hellcat or something, right? But like that's that's one thing that's cool is I sometimes forget how cool it is, and they constantly remind me of like how cool it is or like how rare it is, you right? Because we don't you don't see them anymore, or you know they are. I forget they're like 25, 30. The RX7's 31 years old now, mm -hmm. so like there's not many left or if there are left they are but the s13 is even older right no no the rx7 so the rx7 is a 93 the red one is a 94 the s13 yeah uh, s13 the red really? s13 is a 94 the i thought white the one's one, a 96 i thought the 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 180 um came out in 89 yeah they came out in 88 but my the one i actually have is a 94 and a 96. Mm. the rx7 is a 93 so it's the oldest one i have right so that's another reason why I don't drive it so much or I don't work on it because everything's going to snap and I'm not in the mood to 
Like I look at some bolts and I'm like, well, I should take that out. And I go, mm, if it's still holding on, I'm going to just let it live its life until it doesn't. So I feel like snapping them. Let's, let's change the topic real quick. Mm. Um, it was wonderful <laughs> when we talk, but let's talk about the drift scene mm -hmm. versus the drag scene. Mm. Let's initiate with. Mm. I'm going to give my disclaimer before we start. <laughs> All right. I don't know the drag scene that well. So this is only coming from my experience of what, yeah, as a what, fanatic. I've, what I've seen. Right. So I feel like a lot of people with my background, they grew up drag racing. Right. That's like the thing. Right. Drag racers thing. So when I first moved to Florida and I found out there's a drag strip, I was like, that's where I want to go. I want to do that. Right. And I was going to use the RX-7. Like if you look at the way the RX-7 set up, it kind of looks like a drag car. I have big like 275 on the rear a smaller tire in the front, like it was going to be a drag car, right? But you don't know how fast your car is until you get next to another faster car. And my friend had a Hellcat, and that's when I realized my RX-7 wasn't that fast. So anyways, I was preparing to make a drag car. And so when I finally get to the drag side, what I've noticed is, um, and like this is just my experience from drag racing, everyone kind of keeps their secrets close to their chest. They don't want to tell you. So I saw a guy with an RX-7, I think it might have been the uh, FC, with like it was done really well sounded great ran great could smell e85 like it was done really well mm -hmm. so i just went over and was like what did you do because whatever you did i want to do and he just gave me the look and was like get the fuck out of here and i was like bro i just want to know like it's they don't and i get it i know they're racing for money big money i get it but they not, don't really, not, not really they don't share the information the information not shared now when you go to the drift side you can ask everybody's from anything everybody's and they will me. Like, I know I get annoying to certain people. Um, Jason Frank is probably one of those people. I ask him every, like, every day I'm asking him something. Like, today I was asking him. He's putting an engine together. I was like, what size turbo did you use? What is the AR? What engine are you using? How much power are you pushing? What's the, get? why are you using 85? Is it pump gas? What are you doing? What ECU? Like, I'll ask everything. Mm -hmm. So I kind of size what I want to do. And he answers me every time. And he'll even add information like, hey, you have the S13 subframe. You should probably go to S14. And like people in the drift scene will like help you. Or if you're driving and you're like, I can't figure this out. I don't know why this is not working. You could walk off and ask a better driver and say, hey, could you watch me drive? After that, could you help me out? You did it to me. Yep. I do it all the time because like everyone does it to me. It's just the community. Everyone wants to help. There's you did it to me. You told me, um, I remember that day where you told me, hey, um, you're, when you get, when you get home or you when you get a chance, um, make the the coils in the back oh the, like the coil over softer, softer yep and yeah. then it'll make a world of the, a difference and then the also with the with the tire pressure and all that mm -hmm. you help me with that part mm -hmm. because like people like you'll be surprised how many people watch other people drive and they go yep it's just coils it's coil overs like you can see the car all like all around the way, coil over. and they'll catch you in grid and be like hey man now that you're done switch your switch your pressure here or do this and try that and then let me know how it goes and they'll just they don't want anything from you. They just want to see you get better. And so that's, mm -hmm. I would say that's my biggest thing I've experienced. But, and they, again, people are not drifting out for money over there. We're just having a good time. I understand drag racing, the race for money. You know, maybe my little secret is what's giving me like a 10th of a second faster than you. Right. So I get it. But um, the, the drag side for me has been a little more closed door. And then where the drift side has been open door. It's for everybody, bro. Mm -hmm. um, it's for I think it's for, 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 okay, this is the fucked up part about <laughs> drag racing. And I'm, I'm in the, I'm, I'm very into the drag racing because that's the most, because in reality, my biggest audience mm, drag is racers. drag racing audience. Mm. Cause most of the people that I, that I, um, that I have a podcast with and that mm. I do on that I interview them, they, they are tuners. Um, they are engine assemblers, uh, they, you know, people like that. Mm -hmm. And usually the majority of their clients are people who are seeking to run fast in the in drag racing. Yeah. Right. With that being said, um, I'm going to tell you what's the fucked up part about drag racing. Drag racing is a pride mm -hmm. um, industry. Mm -hmm. And I always say that they're competing for who has, who has a bigger. Mm. If you know what I mean, yeah, I'm not talking about ego. They they <laughs> pretending yeah. like, oh, who got a big girl, mm. and that's stupid because you're playing that game of okay, 
I want to be the best, but the best for what? Mm -hmm. There's all there is always going to be somebody faster, faster than you. Yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is why you treat people the way the way that you probably complain when you were in their shoes when you was starting mm -hmm. when you started in the drug industry. I bet anything you want, and don't be um hypocrite. They don't mm -hmm. don't 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 talk. Don't come with that bullshit that you mm -hmm. that you you was treated right when you started in the drag racing, because mm -hmm. that because that's not true. Mm -hmm. Always the always the people who are who are been in the in the in the drug um industry longer than you, and you're mm -hmm. the new guy. They're always gonna treat you wrong, mm -hmm. and that's true. Even me, that I'm media, I'm not even, I'm not, not a, even a, 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 yeah. I'm not participating. I always, I only show up to to the drag events because I like to cover that shit. Like mm -hmm. I like to, um, tell the people what happened, mm -hmm. my point of view. People love to see those type, those type of yeah, yeah like what's going on, yeah. And I don't consider myself an expert, mm -hmm. but I know a lot. Mm. I think I know a lot. And if people think I don't know a lot, that's fine. There's a chair right there. You can <laughs> sit down. We can debate it. We can debate it. Yeah. And, but we can we we gotta debate it with with money on the table because <laughs> if if, you, if I'm putting all my knowledge uh, uh, on the line, I gotta make some something of it. Yeah. I think like I guess my like that was my only like you know impression of it. What I'm really excited about is like this weekend they have the mystery meet right, mm -hmm. and it's more of a fun event. So you can, whatever you bring, you can drag race. I think mm -hmm. last year there was a minivan drag racing. Like you can bring, what, and I think that's cool. Like I get drag racing serious. It's nice to have a time where it's not serious, where you can just go and have Fun. a good time. And it's like an introductory kind of thing. So you can go race your mom's Kia, right? And you can get introduced without that harsh, like standoff mm -hmm. kind of culture. So I, I wish there were more events like that where it's just for fun and people are just having a good time and you know, but I just stick to the, the drifting side. There's the one thing about drag racing is my mind doesn't think quick enough to do all the stuff they do. Like I, my hat's off to them for driving, but I can't think if my car went a quarter of a mile yeah, the reaction in like everything. eight seconds, I, there's not a lot of things I can do in eight seconds. I can't even think like, you know, drifting a lap will probably take me like 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. I have so much time to like predict what I'm going to do before I even get to, I already know what I, well, when I get there, I'm going to do this. When I get there, I'll do this. Only time it gets a little hectic is behind someone, but still you have time to like, it's not happening super fast. Less money mm -hmm. when it comes to build a car oh, yeah, to the drift. 100%. You can take a shit box out there. More fun. <laughs> and, I have more fun doing it. And this is not relative. Mm -hmm. I know people, there's going to, there's going to be people here in the comment oh, yeah, section. So they're going to say, oh, that's relative. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Drug cars are made only for one or two passes. That's it. Maybe if you're participating in a big event. What what do you think, besides the point that you have so many cars in big, big events, like, like for example, like the World Cup and stuff like that? Yeah, for 2K or something. Well, uh, yeah, for 2K. What do you think they split those events in different days? Mm-hmm. Because of that, mm -hmm. besides the point that you have so many cars, the qualification and stuff mm -hmm. like that, <clears throat> but I've I've been to events where the same car, the like like car with big money into it, mm -hmm. fast cars. I'm not talking about a car that runs like 12 seconds, 10 yeah, yeah. seconds. I'm talking about a car like those uh, top seven cars. seconds or less. Mm -hmm. They don't do more, more than two. Yeah, I wonder if that's because like those engines are being pushed to the absolute. Limit. Of course, you know, like they that, too stress out. Yeah, everything's just and not only that. To the max. There's more. There's more. More on, on technical things going mm -hmm. on. Like for example, they run some brake setups. Oh, they're yeah, made the only for one or two passes. Clutches like, just get smoked. Yeah, yeah, that makes same sense. thing. But the 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 whole my whole point is me from my experience, mm -hmm. and also you can you can also back up what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Um, the drift scene is different. Yeah. It's not as pop as drag racing. I think because drag racing has been a long, like it's been longer. Yeah, it's, it's been, been here longer. longer, right? And I think how how our parents almost see NASCAR, and they're like, "Don't like I just I, this is how I feel, right? I think how our parents see NASCAR, I think slowly drifting will become that thing, mm -hmm. or like, or circuit, yeah, or, or some something like that. I think drifting is slowly. 
and like people will hate this, but I think I'm not saying it's helpful or hurtful. Well, it's more hurtful, but it is slightly helpful. I think takeovers kind of brought light to what drifting is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So you see these guys doing takeovers and if that's your thing, like do your thing, just that's not my thing. Um, yeah, me neither. So like if you're doing a takeover, people are like, what the fuck is this? And it almost pushes them because you're like, why are they doing this? And like, you know, it is, it's almost similar to drifting. And then it kind of pushes you to see like, mm -hmm. oh, this is what they should be doing. Or this is what they could be doing. But they're doing that, right? And it almost brings light to it. And it's a, it's a big thing. But um, I think drifting slowly will become a bigger thing than we can imagine, it, right? If you look like 10 years ago, look at FD like 10 years ago, look mm -hmm. at it now. It's a, it's on a global stage. Especially you got drift with, masters across the ocean. You got, um, especially with the with the social media. Like mm -hmm. social media is what he's been pushing. And it pushes it out. So I don't know. I think drifting. I like drifting. I enjoy it. Um, would I ever drag race? Maybe for like m once or twice. But I think I have so much more to learn in drifting that I can't see me going to drag racing because I have so much more to learn. You you know drifting. me. This is me. You know why I I, I at least me. I don't think. I think if I ever built a car for drag racing, and I know everything I need to build a car uh, for drag racing, mm -hmm. if I ever built one, I don't know, man. I think uh, if I'll do it, I think I'm gonna feel bad at some point because I'm doing, I'm gonna end up doing it to prove myself, mm. and I'm not the type of person that I like to prove myself. Mm. I just let my work you just prove, do, yeah, talk for for its own, mm. but. Since people, I because obviously us, I say us in general, like mm -hmm. people who are in the in the media industry, mm -hmm. whoever says that they don't read comments, they're lying. Oh, you yeah. always read comments. Those always. comments will kill you. And then you have a lot of people, like for, at least at least me, I have a lot of people in my comment section saying like, "Oh, but you're talking all this, and you don't, you don't, you don't do it, you don't yeah. do it." But they don't get it that you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. If you think about people who analyze the the boxing, for instance, mm -hmm. you got two two guys or two females that they box before, and then you have one who's never done it. Who never done it. Yeah. And I, and usually that person is the one who analyzed the the fight better mm -hmm. than the previous yeah. boxer. I think you can definitely analyze things that you've never done. Like, I think that's fine. I think that's okay because that's – even sports commentators, some of them have never played the sport, but they've right. studied it so much they understand it. I think the only thing that's great about if you've done it before, you just have a different perspective mm -hmm. of, like, how hard – you can understand, for an example, a boxer, right? You can understand where his mentality is. I feel like someone who's analyzing, they don't really – they're like, hey, do this, mm -hmm. do this, but they've never been in those shoes, so they don't know, like, what he's analyzing, right? Like, so, for an example, the UFC, some of those commentators – um, like I think Cormier, he, he he's fought before, so he's like, oh, that guy did a major weight cut. He just doesn't have the power because Cormier's done that before. Mm -hmm. So like I think if you've done it, but it doesn't mean that the person who's not done it is less valid than the person who's done it. It's or like, you cannot say anything about it. Yeah, I think right? you, everyone has a perspective. Like with with a grain of salt, it all makes sense in a sense. But I don't know. I don't. But me me at some point, I think I'm gonna. I probably will build one. Mm -hmm. uh, pray a card for for. Excuse me for. Drag racing, mm. just to prove myself. Yeah, and also you know, kind of quiet. And, down and at the same time, let's keep it a thousand. At the same time, <laughs> I want to shut the fuck. Yeah, up let's quiet them down. All these people, mm -hmm. you know. I just, Maybe. I just want to, I just want to tell, I just want to get to it because you know, this whole industry is all about uh, controversy. Mm. Uh, uh, who uh, can make the biggest hot take? Who could do the crazy? Yeah, all the all the drama nonsense. The, the, yeah. the drama. This this industry is related to drama. Mm -hmm. I've Period. Never, I've never been more popular until someone hit my car. <laughs> like so, like it's I really bro drama. Yeah, the biggest thing I do, and they're like trying to put me against the dude that had my, he's my friend. He's we're friends. We talk before. Yeah, he's my boy too. We I talk know. after it. Like it's okay. Like I said, if I put my car on the track, I spun. He hit me. That was my fault. If I don't spin, he doesn't hit me. We're good, right? So. My biggest thing now is I just drive and stay out the way. I don't bother anybody. I just drive, have a good time, stay out the way. But the last thing I'll say, though, is like what I really would like is that more people could come out to events, right? Right. Because everyone has these ideas in their head of what events are. I keep saying it, but I think the V2 Lab event, since I went last year and I couldn't drive, 
and I saw what it was, it was so cool that it was just giving that experience to everyone. Like they had free ride along. So this weekend, I guess, what is that? The 20, whatever this Sunday is, I think it's like the 27th. Um, you get a free, free ride along with entry. So you can get in a drift car for the first time, whatever car you bring, you can drag race. So you can bring anything. You can bring your mom's Honda Civic. You can bring <laughs> your dad's F-150, whatever you want, you can drag race. Right. And it just gets your feet wet into what the culture is. And without all the drama and people and their egos or whatever mm -hmm. and you get to meet like cool people and you can talk to people and it's like a less stressful environment it's also a car show so if that's your thing you can see car show cars and like you can experience the whole gambit of like car culture drag racing drifting the whole thing for for not that much and it's no no drama just right. enjoying it but that's my last take on anything but right 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 hey um and you know to close to close the today's um episode mm -hmm. um i want to ask you to give a little a piece of advice to this new generation they um they're not sure whether they want to um, initiate on this industry mm -hmm. like um the drift industry or or scene or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. Just give them a little piece of advice so they can make up their mind, their mind. And, and and why they should. Yeah. Because um, I've said this to multiple people. I've probably said it to you. I've said it to everyone I've ever mm -hmm. met. Like, do it. Just do it. Because it'll it'll be fun. It's going to be expensive. Like, let that. It's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. Just accept that. If you want any car thing you do, it's going to be expensive. It is. It's just how expensive do you want it to be. But with drifting, it's going to suck in the beginning. It's mm -hmm. going to suck. Like, it's just let that. Just accept it and let it be a thing. It's going to suck, but there's going to come a moment where it clicks. Everyone has it. Everyone I've said it, they're like, hey, man, they hit me up. Like, I'm so glad you made me do it because, like, I get it now. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be a lot going on. Your hands are moving, feet are moving. You know, there's a lot going on. You have to do all these things. And then one day it's going to click and it's going to be the best thing you've ever done. And you're going to be able to not stop doing it. So, like, I say all that to say do it and just keep doing it. Don't stop. Don't mm -hmm. quit because it gets hard. When it gets hard, you know you're doing it right. Right. And just keep going. So that's my thing. Also, before we go, mm -hmm. give me your top five cars. Top five. Woo. Well, first, RX-7 FD. That's my favorite. But that's my personal favorite. Um, I like the Porsche 911 Spider. I like the Porsche GT3. I'm a big Porsche fan. I just can't afford one. Um, <laughs> I like S15s. Um, But one more, one more, one more. And I always, as much as I hate, say I hate them, I only hate them because I can't afford one. I want an R32. I really want an R32. But right? they're not a, they're not that expensive. They're expensive enough that I can't have another car. <laughs> well, yeah. So, but if you if you sell, the, if I sold one, I could buy one, right? But I don't want to give one up. At least the FD, you can go. Yeah, one. I can sell an FD and buy an R32. But yeah, those are probably my five. But GTR. This is R32. I really no, like some people in the comment section, they're going to be like, oh, but you can get a GTT or a GTST or could, GTS, and I could whatever. It, but I want an R32 all-wheel drive. Like, I want one of those. An RB26 mm -hmm. and all that. The whole full shebang, I want one. Oh, and I forgot to uh, to ask you real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you are you planning to keep um to keep the SR20? Are you trying to stay with the SR20 or are you planning in the future? Swap? All right. That yeah, means. so um, I... I don't want to say it and then I don't do it, but I'm building the red car. But I, like I said, the, the point of like, that is the weak point of the SR 20 platform it is the trans, right? So that's my limiting factor. And if I stay with this setup, it will keep me kind of in a bubble because I'm not, I'm not a competitor. I don't want to compete. I just want to have fun with my friends, but I do get out of hand really fast don't they adapt um bmw transmissions they too? do they have the bmw transmission you get a cd09 from a 350z i could do all that mm -hmm. but if i do that that gives me a chance to push my engine even further i can start doing some crazy stuff right and then financially i'll put myself in a hole <laughs> so what i do is like i build within the parameters of the car so it doesn't allow me to go overboard i can't compete well could i could i compete with the white s13 i could but if i'm running against say camel who has a 800 horsepower S13, my 400 horsepower car is not going to keep up on, on an oval track. I just can't catch up. Right. So it keeps me in a box of like a conservative um, and at bigger power levels, your tire budget goes insane. So 
stay in SR20 keeps me in kind of a bubble and a price range that I can stay in and still enjoy it without, you know, I could just be ridiculous, get a 2J and throw it to a thousand horsepower, get a built like dog box train. I could do all that, mm -hmm. but financially, is that a good choice? No. It's, and, you know, who LS. else is going to drive with me? I could go LS and then mm -hmm. get a bigger trans and go 800 horsepower and terrible, like, but no one, I'm not going to go drive with anyone. If mm -hmm. I, do that. I can't drive my friends at the least. So, right, right, right. SR20, God's engine, leave it as it is. Yes, sir. Yes, works. sir. There you have it, everybody. <laughs> um, Man, it was a nice episode. Yes. It was nice to have you here. Yes, yes. Uh, we we definitely gotta uh, gotta talk again and and you know make a second episode. Oh, for um, sure, second for episode, sure. second part two. We might have more cars after that. I don't know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we need to talk about more into details, more like technical things mm -hmm. about drift drifting. Oh yeah. Now that you mentioned, we can have a whole episode about that. Right. Now that you mentioned about the oval, mm -hmm. um, power. Mm -hmm. What do you need for power? Mm -hmm. Um, because you know a lot of people don't know, but when you're in the oval, it's a completely lot different. different. It's a lot different. Whole different beast. And like and low power cars are not welcome there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, especially when you get up. I'm late finished, but like yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. up on the wall and you start feeling the car pull back, and you're like, I don't have enough power. Right. The wall is like four and a half feet big, and it's concrete, and it's like two feet wide. Like yeah. it's intimidating. Right. You know, but it's completely different when you're on a flat surface. You we got to so. dedicate a whole episode for that. Yeah. And yeah, man, I'm so glad that you came here. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm so glad that we finally um did this podcast. Yes. We be, <laughs> like you said, we we we've been talking about this for a long time, mm -hmm. but finally we did it. It's done. Yeah. Let's wait for the next episode. Hopefully by the next episode, I have my my other boy, mm -hmm. the person I'm not gonna say his name yet, but the person <laughs> who hits you. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we got to get together. So we can get together and, to and recap what happened. That, that would be that would be really nice. That that's, that part two, mm -hmm. um, when we discuss all these you know topics and mm -hmm. stuff like that, he can be here and yes, yes. we can all get together. Uh, hey, Fresco, tell all the people, all my audience, what are your social media is so uh, they can follow you. So I have a YouTube, JDM Fresco, and then on Instagram, JDM Fresco is the best way to find me. Um, if you're in Orlando, I'm. More than likely going to be at OSW, like I said, this weekend, Sunday. I'll be out there. I don't know if this episode will come out before that or after that. But if you see me, just jump in the car, man. I'm always down to give someone a ride. When When is going to be the... Sunday. This Sunday? Yep, this Sunday. No, I don't think so. This uh -huh. episode is going to be released next week. Oh, well, then it would have been last Sunday for you when you see it. But like, um, if you ever see me in person, uh, I have a white S13 rocket bunny. You can't miss me. Just jump in the car, man. I'm, I'm always down. I always bring a second helmet. So always down to give a ride. Absolutely. And you guys can follow me on all my social media platform as most graffiti, most TV, most clips, um, M O Z E T V or clips or 350, like however you want to um, write it down. You can find me as most graffiti, most TV, most whatever. It's most <laughs> M O Z E. So, um, Spotify, TikTok, Instagram, um, Discord, Twitch everywhere what i'm what i mean by everywhere is everywhere and stay tuned because your boy here mose is gonna be with most tv at sema show in apex um november 5th all the way till the 9th so stay tuned for that content my english people people who, who don't know um spanish <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna try to give Spencer. you guys uh, uh an, a whole episode um in English, so stay with me. Make sure you hit the like button. Leave a comment right here in the the comment section. Anything you you guys want to say? If you like, if you guys like this episode, um, all the things you you want me to improve, um, anything, anything for the next for part two. Also, let me know in the comment section what kind of topics you guys want me to bring up, and yeah. That's everything for today. Most out. <laughs>